It's a busy time for Aggie Athletics, and today we cover it all our New Mexico State Sports Weekly. National Sunny Day was last week, and head football coach Doug Martin will stop by the studio to fill us in on his 2015 recruiting class that is earning rave reviews around the country. Head coach Marvin Menzies and his men's basketball team just returned to Las Cruces with two whack road wins. Coach will recap the strong week and also preview his team's upcoming home games versus Seattle and Bakersfield. NM State women's basketball has their winning streak up to 11 games, and head coach Mark Trek will help us break it all down in studio. And we wrap up today's show with head softball coach Kathy Rodolph, who saw her team pick up three wins last weekend to start the season. It's a great day to be an Aggie. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Welcome to New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Adam Young. Last Wednesday was National Signing Day, and New Mexico State football welcomed over 20 new players to the Aggie family. The incoming class is receiving rave reviews, and the Aggies are hoping many of these players can make an impact right away when the season starts in the fall. Joining me now is Aggie football head coach Doug Martin. Coach, 24 new Aggies. What can they do for Aggie football? Well, it's definitely a talent upgrade again, Adam. I thought we really recruited well last year, and, and that was proven by the number of all-conference players we had, Larry Rose being the player of the year in the conference, uh, the newcomer of the year in the conference, and I, I really felt like we even recruited better in this, this cycle. You get up to 80 scholarships now for the first time uh, since 07. That's a big deal, isn't it? It is huge. I don't know if people realize, but the last uh, probably 10 years of Aggie football, we've been operating in 65 scholarships. And my first two years here, it's been 65. So that means everybody we play has 20 more scholarship players than we do. Uh, and that's just been an issue that hasn't been addressed. So our staff, when we took the job over, we began to address that issue. And it's taken us two recruiting cycles to get it fixed. But we're back up to 80-something scholarships, and that's going to make a big difference for us. Who are some playmakers you signed on offense that you think fans will really enjoy watching? Well, O.J. Clark will stand out right away, wide receiver from Wichita Falls. O.J. Uh, was committed to SMU early in the recruiting process. They had a coaching change, and he wasn't happy with the change. And Coach Wells did a great job going in there getting him. In fact, we got two young men from that school, uh, Garen Nash being the other one. So O.J. will help us right away. Three tight ends. The tight ends can become really important in our offense now. Uh, uh, Clayton Granch is a junior college tight end is here now. It's going to make a big difference for us. Jason Solbeck, 6'4", 255-pound tight end. And then Montrese Johns, a 6'5", 245-pound tight end. All these guys can run, make plays. Uh, I think they're going to be phenomenal for us. You mentioned the tight ends. That was a need that you had. Did you address all the needs you had in the offseason? I really believe we did. We signed some really good young offensive linemen that for the first time around here, we're going to be able to redshirt a lot of freshmen coming in. So that's going to help us. Uh, running back, Brandon Leonard's a guy that we felt like we needed to get uh, that also hopefully could be redshirted. And then on defense, we really attacked the front seven again. Four defensive linemen, four linebackers, and I think we really uh, recruited exceptionally well there. The other one is the place kicker, Adam, mm -hmm. you know. And, yeah. uh, Nobody cares about it until you don't have a good one. <laughs> right. But uh, Parker Davidson, he is the fifth-ranked kicker in the United States, and we got Parker here, so uh, he'll help us definitely right away. What can you say about your coaching staff and the job they did in the recruiting process? Well, they were relentless, and you know, recruiting is a difficult process. You know, our guys haven't had a weekend off until this past weekend mm -hmm. since August, so it's it's a long process. I thought what we did well was we were very very patient in recruiting. Uh, the last recruiting weekend, we brought in nine young men. All nine had offers from power conference schools at one time or another, uh, and we got all nine of them. And that's a little bit risky to wait that long and to wait on those type of kids, but it paid off for us in this process. And yeah, I just thought our coaches did a great job of evaluating. Building on that, were you able to beat out some schools that normally you haven't in the recruiting process? We did. You know, North Texas has been a school that's been really hard for us to defeat down there in Texas. Uh, but Derek Watson was a, a kid from right there in Denton yeah. uh, that we got big defensive lineman that's going to help us. Now, we had a little bit of an advantage. Derek's both parents went to New Mexico <laughs> State. Dad played football here. Mom was a swimmer here. Uh, so that certainly helped us. But uh, still, to go up head-to-head -head against them and get a player of his caliber, uh, I thought was really key for us. And then several of the linebackers that, uh, that we recruited had multiple offers and, and the defensive linemen. What's the timeline now, Coach, for your program leading up to the spring football game? Yeah, we've got uh, winter conditioning going on right now, uh, so we're getting bigger and stronger with that freshman class. This is their first cycle to get through the weight room with Coach Decker, so it'll make a big difference with them. Uh, spring practice will start March 30th. We'll finish up with the spring game, I believe, April 25th, right around that area. 
uh, and then you know back out recruiting for next season in May, and then this freshman class will report in July, and, and here we go again. Finally, Coach, where's the excitement level at now when you combine last year's class and this 2015 class? Yeah, I think it's really big for our staff, I know, and our players. Uh, and I think we've gotten so many things accomplished, Adam, off the field that needed to be fixed. You mentioned the scholarship numbers. Uh, our APR score, we made the APR score, which was so huge academically for our football team. We've come so far as a football program academically mm -hmm. to where we are now. And the talent level upgrades, the facilities. We have such a wow factor here now. When you bring kids to visit this campus and they get to see that new weight room and the new field and the commitment that's here and uh, you know President Carruthers, uh, Mario Mocha, our new athletic director, we're at every recruiting weekend. Our faculty shows up and meets with these kids. I mean, we've got you know, a great facility and a great uh, atmosphere here to sell. Can't wait for the season, Coach. Talk soon. We're excited about it. Thanks, Adam. When we return, head of men's basketball coach Marvin Menzies will visit the studio. We'll review his team's road wins at Chicago State and UMKC last week. Stay with us on New Mexico State Sports Weekly. The Aggie men's basketball team has a two-game lead in the WAC standings after a pair of road wins last week at Chicago State and UMKC. The Aggies received strong play all week from their front court to help them move to 7-1 in league play. Head of men's basketball coach Marvin Menzies is with me in studio. Coach, the UMKC game, you were right. tied at the half. It was tight midway through half two. What prompted the turning point that led to the result? My inspirational speech at halftime. Uh, had to be top three all time. Okay. <laughs> no, I think it was, uh, you know, we did, we did make some adjustments. Um, you know, they, they, they did, <laughs> UMKC did a great job with their half court pressure. I mean, they were, they were all over us and, and, uh, you know, really at full court as well, I should say, because we were turning the ball over and, and it wasn't just as I went back and looked at the film, it wasn't just unforced turnover. I mean, they were they were getting in, in, in lanes and, and doing some good things to, to make us turn it over. And then once we settled down and we got our press offense together and uh, that combined with the, an offensive focus to really continue to, to get the ball inside, whether it was off the bounce or via pass or reversal and then inside to weak side. We just, we had to find a way to get inside touches. And I think that was really kind of critical for us at the end. Did the league get a pretty good taste of how good the Chile and Poway Pascal Siakam combination can be? Yeah, I tell you what, they were, they were, they were rolling that second half, man. <laughs> they were really, really good. I mean, with Pascal's ability to, to run the floor, his athleticism and, and score in the paint and, and he's making better passes now and better decisions once he's getting more comfortable with their spacing and where guys are supposed to be located on the floor once he catches it in the low end and the high post. And, and then Chile just, you know, was, was Chile of old, <laughs> so to speak. He, he, um, you know, he went in there on a mission. You know, the one thing I did see in the second half also that wasn't on the coaches at all was I saw the senior, um, the senior effect mm -hmm. start to kick in. You know, you started to see Chile and, and Daniel interact a little bit differently with the guys. And uh, I don't know if I should say that publicly because now they're going to, you know, but no, but probably not. I mean, they, they were great. They were fantastic in the huddles. They were fantastic on the floor. Their level of communication was stellar. And they just did a great job of being engaged the whole game with great energy and great passion to, to try to, you know, play every possession as if it was the last possession. And they moved to the next one when there was a mis miscue. I mean, we had 16 turnovers. So you have the ability of seniors to, to kind of, you know, orchestrate the, 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 the guys on the floor, man, I can step back and enjoy the show. We'll have more with Coach Menzies when we return. Welcome back to New Mexico State Sports Weekly. NM State men's basketball is gearing up for a pair of home games this week in the Pan American Center. The Aggies will take on Seattle Thursday before matching up with Bakersfield on Saturday. Head coach Marvin Menzies is with us. Cameron Dowler's Red Hawks on Thursday, Coach. Is there something to prove after losing to them earlier this season? Uh, yeah, they beat us. <laughs> you know, that's definitely something <laughs> to prove that, you know, that we could play better than we yeah. did when we were in Seattle. So, yeah, there's no question my guys got to, you know, they've got to compete. You know, they, I mean, anybody that's beat you early in the season, you can say, okay, we got another shot at proving that we can play better than we did last time. So, I think there's that. But, uh, you know, as the conference starts to unfold and you start to look at your, where you are in the seating and so forth, you know, as coaches, we go, oh, you know, we got to concentrate on the next game, next game, next. That's true, but, I mean, let's face it, we're fans as well as yeah. coaches. So we're looking and going, okay, if we can get rid of this one and then move up one more game where that's so on and so forth, you know, as you jockey for trying to win the regular season, uh, this is a big game. You know, obviously, um, uh, you don't want to have uh, lost 
two losses to the same team. So we want to make sure that we go out and take care of business. You're 7-1 and one now in the WAC, two-game lead. Do you recall a year during your tenure when you were in this good of a position eight games in? Uh, I honestly can't. I'm, I'm trying to think back now. We've been here eight years now, so I've got I to gotta go back a little further. <laughs> but, um, no, I don't, I don't ever remember having a two-game lead. I think, I think we've always stumbled early mm -hmm. in conference, um, and, and it's kind of been a catalyst to, to being ready to play our best ball you know, come the WAC tournament. Uh, that's always been our focus. We've never had a non-conference where we came in with this amazing non-conference record of 12 and two or 10 and, you know, four, whatever it is. So therefore you, you, you're always trying to make sure that your guys are just getting better, getting better, getting better. So I, I honestly can't remember a time that we've had a two game lead. And if you jinxed it, I'm coming back to get you just so you know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Pascal Siakam coach, a steady year all season. Yeah. But as his coach, have you seen him improve on a daily basis? Well. Yes, I have, and it's uh, maybe not daily because you're, you're, you know, you're always like this as a freshman. You have good days, you have bad days, but incrementally, he's, he's, he's the, even the ups and downs are still rising up. You know, he's also um, doing great things off the court. His community, hour, community service hours are off the charts. His GPA is, is you know, mid mid threes. Uh, um, he's a fantastic teammate. Um, he's just a joy to coach. You know, a joy to be around and. And it helps that he's a really good player, too. <laughs> For sure. Be sure to come out to the Pan American Center Thursday and Saturday as the Aggies try to go to 9-1 in league play. Good luck this week, Coach. All right. Thanks a lot, Adam. When New Mexico State Sports Weekly returns, head women's basketball coach Mark Track will stop by the studio to talk about his team's 11-game winning streak. We'll be right back. Winning has been contagious all season for New Mexico State women's basketball. The Aggies recorded home wins last week against Chicago State and UMKC to push their winning streak to 11 games. The Aggies are 8-0 in WAC play and have now won 15 of their previous 16 games. Joining me now is head coach Mark Track. Coach, a pair of wins last week. The stat of the week was 33 forced turnovers against UMKC. How impressive is that number to you? Let's go. You know, we we want to go out. We want to press people. We want to turn the ball over. We want to augment our offense <clears throat> through our defense. And I think we scored uh, 40 points off turnovers against uh, UMKC and 30 uh, against Chicago State. So we're doing a good job there. We're doing a good job pressuring. We're doing a good job turning people over. Where we're not doing a good job is when teams actually break the press and set up their half court offense. Uh, UMKC shot 53% from the field and Chicago State shot 43%. We've really got to address that issue because uh, once they broke our press, it was more or less dummy offense and we cannot go back to that trend uh, from last year. We've got to play good, solid half court defense. You're 15 and one now coach in your last 16 games. As a coach, have you had a chance to reflect on what your team has done so far during this stretch? Not really, because we haven't done anything. I mean, we don't have a championship. We're not in the NC2A uh, tournament. You know, you got to take it as a day at a time. At the end of the season, if we do something special, but you know, our, our goal was win 17, 18 games this year. We don't have a senior that plays. Well, Jazz Rutledge has been playing a little, but we were predominantly a uh, a young team. You know, we're all freshmen, sophomores, and and juniors, and we figured we're a year away, and and we might be a year ahead of schedule. So we're, we don't want to move the needle, and it appears yeah. we're going to move the needle in the positive direction direction this year and who knows I mean hopefully uh, we can win the tournament we can win the conference and get to the NCAA but if we win 18 19 games uh, it's going to be a very very successful year and the future is extremely bright we just got to manage expectations now take it a possession at a time a game at a time and understand that that really we, we haven't accomplished that, that much yet 20 points for Sasha Weber against UMKC she's now 10 away from 1000 how special will that moment be when she gets it that's going to be very special, and to do it as a as a junior, uh, Sasha is is you know she she does everything. She rebounds, she defends, she handles the ball. Um, you know, great three point shooter, and she's a great clutch player down the stretch of a lot of the games, especially in the last ten minutes. You see Sasha hitting a big three or going to the basket or making big free throws like she did against Texas Pan American. She's going to go down as one of the all time greats uh, at. Uh, 
uh, here at New Mexico State University. And the thing that she's got to have on her resume, though, to be one of the greats is she needs a ring. You know, all, all those kids do. And, and that, that'll really solidify because we haven't been to the tournament yeah. since 1989. We haven't won a conference championship since 2005. I think they won a co yeah. a co championship. So I think not just Sasha, but Shanice, all the kids, I think, you know, to really solidify a legacy, get us into the tournament for the first time in a long time. I think that would be a, a great accomplishment, but she is definitely uh, going to go down as one of the all time great basketball players here at New Mexico State University. Sasha is certainly a player of the year candidate in the conference. You probably have two other candidates as well, don't you? With Davis and Freeman, the seasons those two girls are having. Yeah, like I said, we still have six games to go, but Davis has had a great season and Brianna Freeman. Brianna Freeman now gives us an inside presence. She can score inside, you know, and she she came up to me after the game, uh, after the Chicago State game, and said, Coach, man, I shot 19 times and only made six <laughs> of them. I said, Brianna, our guards have been doing that for the last three years. So don't worry about it. You can go six and 19 just as easily as a wing can. So just shoot the ball. Uh, so she, she's very confident in there. She's got the green light in there. I told her, I said, you can be the Sophia Young of our conference. Yeah. She's that kind of athlete. And then she's turning into that, you know, and, and uh, she's doing a great job. And Shanice, what can we say about Shanice? She's given us great, great point guard, great kid. She's a bulldog out yeah. there, great defensive player, great leader. So I think those three people are, are, are definitely uh, – uh, worthy of consideration should we happen to finish first and second in, in this conference. Follow the Aggie women's basketball team as they head on the road this week for games at Seattle and Bakersfield. Keep it rolling, Coach. Thank you, Adam. After the break, head softball coach Kathy Rodolph will join me to discuss her team's three wins last week, which included an upset of nationally ranked Nebraska. Stay tuned for more New Mexico State Sports Weekly. NM State Softball started their season by hosting the Hotel Encanto Invitational last weekend in Las Cruces. The Aggies picked up wins against number 18 Nebraska, Montana, and Colorado State to start their season on a high note. Here to look back at the tournament is head coach Kathy Rodolph. Coach, a lot of talent in Las Cruces last weekend. What's your takeaway of how your team performed? Well, I, I definitely love the way that we came out hot swinging the bats early. We've always felt like offense was a strength of ours, but I was also very proud of Carista Donisthorpe in the circle. Um, she, you know, she had been plagued by injuries over the last couple of years, and it's great to see her back and healthy. The highlight, of course, was the win against number 18, Nebraska. What can that do for your program going forward? Well, that was one of the biggest slugfests that I have ever seen in my <laughs> entire years of coaching. I think both teams swung it. The, the hitting coaches won that night. Yeah. And uh, I, it definitely shows that we have a, a very quality team. You scored 16 runs against Nebraska. That was the most runs they've allowed in program history. This offense has the chance to be pretty special, doesn't it? Well, it, it absolutely does. And I think that our strength comes in numbers because we have eight kids that have hit home runs. So it's really hard to pitch around somebody or key on one person. You beat Colorado State 8-2 to two on Sunday to cap up play in the tournament. Pitching was pretty good that day, wasn't it? You used all three pitchers. Absolutely. The combination of Carista Donisthorpe and Dallas McBride and Michaela McAdams is a handful to deal with. Dallas McBride is going to be one of the standout marquees of our program this year. She is a left-handed flamethrower that first weekend out maybe had a few jitters, but I expect her to get better and better. Michaela came in and did a great job, too. As you look back at the tournament, Coach, what are some things you want to improve on this week in practice into next weekend? Well, as far as pitching goes, I want to eliminate the walks. I feel like the, the strike, we had some quality officials in this weekend, three World Series officials in, and the strike zone was maybe a little bit smaller than mm -hmm. what we we're used to. And I think I'd like to see us adapt a little bit sooner to eliminate the walks because our, our team plays great defense behind our kids. Were there any big surprises in the first five games for your team? Oh, uh, not really. I, well, I think maybe the more excitement is that everybody can't just key on Stacy Rodriguez, yeah. that we have secured around her to where we're letting Stacy be Stacy and, and the rest of the girls carry their weight as well. The two losses you took, close losses, you had leads in both. Can you learn from those types of games? Oh, absolutely. You know, in, in both of those games, I'm pretty sure we walked the lead off and the top of the seventh and that came back to bite us and 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 maybe the game speeded up on us just a little bit so we're going to try to eliminate that we've got 
some great competition coming in this weekend mm -hmm. in Kansas, and they are 0 and 5. And we're going to try to do a little bit better against top top tier teams. Do you have a better idea of what you have five games in? Well, absolutely. I believe that offense was going to be our strength, and one of my goals was that defense was going to be right there with it. And I feel like for the most part, we played pretty clean softball. Kansas, Weber State, and Bradley this weekend. What's your preview of that one, Coach? Well, Kansas is going to come in as the favorite. They just went 5-0 and on the first weekend out. Um, Weber uh, has a pitcher. They ended up beating us last year at UNLV. And so we're going to have to really, you know, handle her when she comes in. And, and Bradley, our assistant, is married to their yeah. hitting coach, um, uh, Kate Malvo and, and Chris Malvo. So that's going to make an interesting matchup on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Finally, Coach, how much of a benefit is it to be home for the first two weekends? Oh, it, it's huge because I feel like, you, you know, you're – trying to learn each other right out of the box. And when you can do it on your field, if you can get your feet under you early and get that confidence, then you can feed off of that. And I feel like that's what we did. The Aggies will be hosting the Troy Cox Classic Friday through Sunday. The Aggies will battle Kansas, Bradley, and Weber State over the weekend. Best of luck this weekend, Coach. Thank you. Tickets for baseball and softball are on sale right now. To be part of the excitement, call the Aggie Ticket Office at 575-646-1420. You can also get your tickets online at nmstatesports.com or ticketmaster.com. If you missed any part of today's show, check us out on YouTube. And also be sure to stay up to speed on social media by liking New Mexico State Athletics on Facebook and following us on Twitter. That will do it for this week's installment of New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm Adam Young saying thank you for watching and go Aggies.